nothing on me I'm a fucking supercharged love machine I'll give it to you every night and day Kind of love I'm a woman who says When I saw you jump down in my shoes oh, Damn, baby, I'm in love with you Been driving out on Interstate 4 The way you do it, that's me out of control down I have had hundreds of movies sent to me where someone dies in the first page and, and, and it's boring. I have had hundreds of movies sent to me where you have some, a number of people, generally girls with lovely breasts and, and cute men, somewhere. They're in a camp, they're in a big house, they're, 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 they're mining somewhere, and one by one they get killed. I think it's enough already with those movies. Don't make movies where everybody dies and where there's blood and gore just because, just because you think it'll make money. Now, there are people who like gore. There are people who love gore. Well, then make that gory movie. But if you don't like gore and you want to make money, think of something you, you know, that's realer to you than, than uh, blood, which is kind of boring. I'm really disappointed when I find people making movies because they think they'll sell. I think that that's really, you know, forsaking of their own soul. You know, what the hell are you doing? But still, sometimes you should say, I want to make something that's very real to me that other people might, family, for example, love, you know, is always going to be interesting. Everyone loves love, ev forever. Um, relationships, pretty good, pretty good. But not, not. That's all. It's it's that it's that balance. It's it's a difficult balance. But I would rather err in the sense that somebody makes a movie that gets sold a little that they felt a lot about. You know, Dennis Hopper liked that era of life. He loved it. He loved hippies and 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 people helping each other and crazy living and freedom and adventure. He loved it. He loved it. He was very real to him. And then after that, everyone tried to imitate him when they couldn't care less about the, pick, the subject. Didn't care about the subject. So it didn't sell. It wasn't real to him. It's not going to be real to anybody. Well, what about going to festivals? And isn't that helping to sell a movie when you go to Cannes? I think it's always good for an actor to be willing to help. It's always good for an actor to be willing to, if he likes or she likes the film, you know, it's got to be honest. Like you don't make friends with people you don't like. But you're going to go to festivals and go do television, um, talk shows and all that. Yeah, it's wonderful. And actors, by the way, do that a lot. There's a lot of that going on. It's wonderful. And by the way, when you think an actor is going to do that, especially who, an actor who's a name, and then suddenly they won't, it really bruises production. It's really harsh. It's very harsh. Really, really hard. If you're an actor, especially if some, uh, you know, if you're a celebrity, uh, I knew this incident where they gave the production cause to believe that they were going to, to really promote for the picture and do talk shows, and, they, and then they wouldn't do anything. Um, and it was really harsh for the production, really hurtful. But they couldn't recover. They didn't. They couldn't get up again after they fell down. Was, so when you give your word, keep it, no matter what. My advice is, <laughs> don't give up. I mean, that's really strange advice, but that is my advice. And how you don't give up is. <clears throat> Um, when you're promoting any product, what I find is people think I'm going to irritate somebody. I'm going to uh, make someone mad at me. I'm going to overdo this. I'm going to pester. No, you're not going to pester. You're not going to pester. So I, an example I have of this is um, somebody once, about 10, 15, 15 years ago, called they wanted to do Karen Black t-shirts. They had a lot of real cute ideas. Oh, this is great. Let's do, I like it. I, like, I was doing a movie. It was a very um, overwhelming experience because there was so much to memorize and it was so hard to shoot. It was a very emotional movie for George Hickenlooper. 
and I, I couldn't phone anyone. I couldn't do anything. So finally it was over and I wanted to go back, but they hadn't called again and I'd lost the number. So if they'd called repetitively, I would be very happy to give my name for their t-shirts. But what happens is people give up because they think, well, they don't like me. They don't, they don't anything. They're nothing, they're just busy. They don't remember you. I've always found that the more important a person, the less taken they are with their own egos. I find important people to be ego-free. I really do. And I find people who are worried about the importance of themselves, they, they, could, they might uh, be, be kind of uh, off-putting, off-put off by, 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 by all this uh, continuous communication. So you just have to really communicate a lot. You have to really do it until you get a response. And you can't give up and you can't worry about how they feel because you don't know how they feel. You're making it up. I'm not going to name names, but I was involved in a movie, and I knew the producing, the produce, producing entity it might be called, I knew the producers, and I knew the person who wanted to make the movie, and she was involved with the distributor. They got money to make the movie, and before they were done, they came back to the producers, and, and she said, like a jerk, we knew when we asked for the amount of money we asked for before it wouldn't be enough to finish the movie. So any participation I had had, you know, they, and, and I agreed with them. They took me out because I got them involved in these people who lied to them. And this particular distributor did what a lot of distributors do. Imagine America and imagine Europe and imagine a little island in the middle. Okay, that's the setup. Your movie is America. You're trying to sell it to Europe and the distributor's in the middle. So you send your movie to the distributor, right? And the people in, on the other side in Europe send the money to the distributor. Okay, now he's got your movie and he's got the money. Why would he send it to you? He, 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 he likes that island. He liked, you know, to buy a little uh, casa there. You see what I'm saying? So this happens a lot with producers. Is, they, is they're in this horrible position where they can steal your money <laughs> and get away with it because they've got it. And you don't know where it is and where it's come from. They know where it's come from and how much it is and you don't. So I think that's a real hardship with, with distributors. It's just really true that when you're selling anything, the way it looks to the buyer should be the way it really is. Because, yes, if, you, if people, even lectures, they're examples of people who used to lecture about um, communism in the 30s, I can't really remember names, but they seem to be white bread and they didn't seem to, they didn't seem to look liberal, like they, they had no, I guess it's the 60s, no long hair, I'm sorry, this is a stupid example, but people were, didn't buy their books and didn't come to the lecture, so they didn't look like people who had ever had a problem or who would ever be liberals, who would ever need money or who would ever need um, the government to pay any attention to their needs, do you know what I mean? So it's really, and I learned from reading about that how true that is, that you, you really have to have people expect what they're gonna get or you're gonna be in terrible trouble. <laughs> I did a movie called um, Bluetooth Virgin, and it's a terribly witty movie. It was well received, it got wonderful reviews. I got wonderful reviews too, really wonderful. <laughs> and um, Russell Brown directed and wrote, and then he, he pulled in someone, this might be a clue. He knows someone who is an amazing editor, like a very upscale editor whose name I don't remember at all. And he did the final edit. And I think partly because of that, he sold his movie across the US. This movie was a very small budget movie, very witty, very fun, really good. And it played across the US, and you can get a DVD of it, the Bluetooth version. It won Seattle. And um, so I, I actually am not much of a complainer about movies. I kind of suspect 
that if it's a really good movie and you go out and you get a really good final cut, don't be sloppy, that, you know, you're going to sell it. I have a movie that I did, which is a very nice movie, called um, Nothing Special, you know, and I'm, it's, everyone is incredible, like Barbara Bain and Julia Combs, Angela Garcia Combs directed it. But see, it's a movie about a girl who has a kind of crazy mom played by moi, and a very um, clever, pragmatic boss played by Barbara Bain. Fine. I don't know who's interested in that. Does someone want to see that? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna complain if that doesn't get distributed very well. No, it keeps winning awards. I've won Best Actress two film festivals. She keeps winning film film festivals. But I don't know. I really think what you have to do to make a good movie is is make a movie about something you care about that's real to you, for which you have affinity that you can communicate about, and then you'll, you'll tend to have a good movie. But sometimes it's good to wonder, you know, what is it that is very real to me that I care about a lot, I have a lot of affinity for, and therefore I can communicate about it, but other people want to know.